Welcome back to International Scale Modeler. I'm Lee. This is the July new show. Welcome back. Um, I told you we'd start doing them regular again. Uh, today's drink, as you can see, which I'm going to take from my brand new favourite mug, um, is Red Bull. And I can honestly say there is absolutely nothing else in this cup. No vodka, uh, no rum, no nothing. It's just straight Red Bull because I was out last night till late. Um, my son was at a friend's house. We got really ill, so three o'clock in the morning we had to go out, go and get him and everything, uh, bless his soul. So he's still poorly at the moment, so I've had no sleep uh, on top of a good night out. So uh, I need this. Mm. Oh, there's something about Red Bull. It really is. Donate. Anyway, so coming up. Uh, ISM news uh, uh, and updates, obviously GB and SIG news, uh, Ultimate news, Minor Pools current build updates. Uh, we've got a couple of reviews, uh, Studio Burrito Thin File and the new Ultimate Gloss Black Primer. And uh, obviously we'll come up with the free prize winners for June and the prizes for July as well, amongst many other things. And so I think let's get started first off with Ultimate News. Okay, so Ultimate News. Ultimate News is this new product, which is Ultimate uh, Primer in Gloss Black. Uh, we're selling it in 120 milliliters and 60 milliliter bottles, uh, which I think in America is four and two ounce. Um, this is basically uh, a specific primer for um, anything that you want with a natural metal finish on the end of it. So let's say you've got uh, any aircraft with an NMF finish, um, or you've got uh, a car or a bike that's got a metal finish, chrome parts, you know, all that sort of stuff uh, that you would normally use just a normal base coat and then go over with a chrome or something. You use a shiny, glossy uh, base coat, it actually adds an extra pop to the, to the, to the top color and obviously the gloss with a finish of the gloss on top as well. And it just adds that extra depth to the shine and everything for your model. So definitely worth having in your arsenal. We're not gonna include it in the triple packs or the mega packs or anything like that because it's a, it's a little bit more niche than the mainstream colors, uh, but uh, it is available on our website now and from obviously leading retailers as well. So definitely get yourself a bottle of that. It is really good stuff. I've used it, I've, we practiced it obviously. We had bottles and then we were testing it a lot before we marketed it and we really enjoyed it and I think Paul's used it on a couple of builds so far already as well. So um, we also have several other new products coming out over the next couple of months as well. So watch out for those. Um, we did hope to have two products released this month, but unfortunately we were knocked back on one just for, uh, because of manufacturing process, that's all. So we shall uh, announce that next month, but it'll be released before next month's show, but we'll tell you what it is on the show as well. Um, I, I think we've, uh, been, we've done a lot with uh, the next thing with, with regards to Ultimate is the fact that we um, is our sponsorship of uh, Model for Heroes. Uh, now, uh, we have been banging on about it quite a lot recently, um, and uh, I, Paul and the Friday Night Live crew from International Scale Modeler, uh, we did a, a big, they did a big auction on, online and managed to raise over 2,300, 2, pounds um, are, where, where people uh, donated kits to be auctioned off from the live crew and from other members of International Scale Modeler, which is absolutely fantastic. I just want to say a big thank you to you guys. Um, and it went way beyond our expectations um, for, for that uh, auction as well. So I know Malcolm was very, very pleased indeed. They had great financial support to his charity, which I believe has just been registered for non-tax um, uh, a non-tax charity as well, which is fantastic news for him. So he doesn't have to pay tax on his, you know, stuff and, and things like that, which is really good because it's a non-profit organisation, as you know. But it's really great. If you haven't heard of it before, of which would be a bit of a, a strange thing, really, if you've watched any of our stuff recently. Um, but uh, Malcolm, so Models for Heroes is basically uh, a brainchild of Malcolm Charles, and he went around and. He gets models together and he goes to stress centers for ex uh, service personnel and things like that. Takes some models, um, you know, all the sanding sticks and, you know, other glue and all the stuff that you need to build models. And just sits down with the guys and they do a modeling session for a few hours. Um, and he goes sort of all over the centers all over the UK. And he also ships stuff off as well without going there as well. So, and I know he's had a fantastic response uh, lately. He's had loads of kits donated. 
He even collects the uh, Airfix hours. If you've got lots of Airfix hours saved up, um, you're more than welcome to donate them. Malcolm's doing a big thing at the moment. He's had loads of them donated as well. Uh, which is fantastic. It's a very easy way for you to, to donate to the charity. Uh, obviously, you can go to their Facebook page and their donate page, their website, and donate money as well. Um, and I would really hope that uh, you guys will continue to support Model for Heroes. But I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that took part in the auction uh, last Friday. That was a fantastic result, really great. And it's nice to see the international scale model community come together to uh, help uh, contribute to a, a fantastic cause. And it's something that we can all relate to as well because it's it's, our, it's part of our hobby. So welcome Malcolm, welcome to Models for Heroes and welcome to everyone who's donated and made an effort so far. It's been very much appreciated, I'm sure. Um, right, now we're gonna go over to ISM News. Okay, international scale modeling news. Right. Okay, so just a, a quick. We just. I just wanted to mention a quick thing where we are with regards to subscribers. And that we just hit literally a couple of weeks ago, thirty-two thousand subscribers on uh, YouTube, which is phenomenal. Uh, we started um, international scale modeler. Oh, what is it? I think it's four years ago now. I think it's yeah, it's just over four years. Um, and uh, I think. We started off with uh, a YouTube channel that we had already in place, which had about 500 subscribers. But since then, it's just since we started International Scale Model, it's just gone crazy. I mean, 32 subscribers, 1,000 subscribers, just fantastic. I and mean, just thank you guys for your support. Um, but we've got our Facebook page now is is busier than ever. We've got over 12,000 members on that, and we're getting you know probably 30, 40 new members a day, which is fantastic. And we get a lot of um, uh, a lot of scammers and things like that as well, which we manage to filter out because we make it an invite only club or they have to request uh, membership. So uh, we've got a good admin team on the Facebook team which managed to screen out all the uh, people that want to sell their sunglasses and dirty nappies and things like that. So that's great. Uh, also, obviously, the forum is still growing. Great, great guns. We've nearly got 7,000 members on the forum as well, which is fantastic. Um, and uh, we want to sort of make an extra push on the forum as well, so because uh, the the GBs and the SIGs have gone um, just not a great deal, about 10-15% less than what they normally did. So we'd like to get the interest back up in inter international scale mod the forum. I know it's a bit tough with Facebook because Facebook's ever so easy to post to. But the thing is with Facebook is you do lose your information very very quickly, and if you're like me and you don't have a lot of time. I don't have time to scan all the way down the pages. I look at the first couple of pages of International Scale Modeler and, and that's what I comment and see on. So, um, you know, if you want uh, your work and anything else modeling related more permanent, then most definitely go over to the forum, register and, and post it all there. It'll, it'll be there forever, you know, apart from this bloody photo bucket thing, which we'll go into in a bit. Um, yeah, so we've seen a massive shift from the forum to, uh, to Facebook, which is, I think it's just a, I think it's a global thing. It's not just with our forums. I think a lot of forums are, are feeling the same thing as well. But uh, to be honest with you, International Scale Modeler Forums is the mainstay of ISM, and that's where all the action happens with regards to GB SIGs, offers, you know, sales, all that sort of thing. So uh, do go over to intscalemodeler.com, register, have fun, basically. That's it. So, um, we've got at least three group builds and SIGs going at any one time. So there's always a, a build project you can join in with and model with other modelers. Uh, which is great fun because you're you're building around the same subject and you can all bounce ideas off each other and all see how your work's going. You can all help each other out if you hit a mojo black spot and things like that. So it's really good. So do get over there. Um, we do reveal vids for the uh, GBs and SIGs and everything, which lately um, we haven't done for the last few months. But with that and Photo Bucket, the problems with Photo Bucket, we're having a real problem with the GB and SIG reveal shows at the moment. I'm going to do another one next week. Uh, the FAA one, uh, which is the last SIG, hopefully, that will be affected by Photo Bucket. Everyone would have moved for the next SIG. Uh, the next SIG, the SIGs that are in process at the moment, anyway. But your work gets shown to thousands of people on YouTube. We do a reveal vid. If you want to have a look at the type of thing you're looking at, if you go back to before Christmas and you have a look at some of the other reveal vids that are on there on the SIG reveal shows or the GB reveal shows, which you'll see under the um, news and home channel on the ISM YouTube channel. Uh, go and have a look and you see this thing. It's, it's nice to see everyone's work all together and everyone gets a bit of praise and everything for, for finishing and, and doing your models and everything. So it's really great to see as well. The, the amount of work and effort that goes involved is fantastic. Um, there are always prizes to be had. We have sponsors uh, like um, E-Models, ourselves, Ultimate Modern Products, SNM Stuff, Aircraft.net, 
um, and uh, there's always prizes to be had. I mean, we know it's not about the prizes, but it's a nice little recognition touch for the people that put that extra special bit of effort into to finishing and everything like that. That's why the prizes are there. It's not a competition to win the prizes per se, um, but they're there just as a as a well done, you know, to the ones that make, they go over and above the the norm to to uh, make their models look fantastic for ISM basically. Um, the SIGs and GBs are run different to nearly all other uh, forums because they tend to go on the finished article. If the finished article is good, you win. Uh, ours is made up uh, of four sections of points, 25 points for each section. And it's things like you've got 25 points is, you, is your maximum you can get for your finished article. And you've got the thread, how good your thread is, how much information the process is, uh, historical information as well about the subject that you're building, anything like that, that all goes towards your uh, finishing thing. So it doesn't matter if you could have the most gorgeous model of, hands down best model you've seen in 10 years um, if they haven't done a thread to back it up it won't win simple as that you know so uh, and we've had to let a few go by the wayside like that as well so uh, it's really good so anyone from beginners to experience can have um, a fair crack of the whip and have a good chance to finish in the top three and obviously get that acknowledgement in the prizes and everything uh, but if you fancy it, head over to inscalemodel.com, register, as I said, and you can join in uh, with any of the GBs and SIGs right up to the la very last day. Um, I mean, if a SIG, GB or SIG has started, um, then you can join in at any time until the finish date. So if it's three weeks in or six weeks in, um, then you've still got six weeks or two months to, to finish it or whatever, then you can join in at any time. Some people enter two or three builds as well at some point. So uh, definitely worth a look. If you haven't had a look, go over to the forum and do check it out, please. Uh, right, so the other thing was, um, oh, I still need some more of this Red Bull. I'm flagging. Um, photo bucket, I mean bucket, uh, photo bucket. Um, have decided to literally screw everyone in the world that uses them. Um, not just the people that use it for free, uh, but the people who are actually on existing pro plans, like myself. I have a, a pro plan at the moment, a pro 20 plan, which I paid, I think it's $25 a year. And it allows me to put, uh, I think it's something like silly, like 10, 15 gigabytes of, of information on there, or a terabyte, I don't know, I can't remember. Anyway, but I've only got five gigabytes on there, but that's 10,000 images I've got on Photobucket that I've accrued over a, over a 10 year period. Um, and I've got images scattered all over forums, you know, from, from the last decade, you know, ones that I no longer use or anything like that, but the, the images are still there for reference, you know. Uh, but unfortunately, even paying customers like myself, who have gone from $25 a year, um, which I have no problem paying for a service because it's a good service, or used to be. Uh, but they're now saying that you're going to have to pay $400 a year just to be able to embed your photo into a forum or any other third party hosting or anything like that. It's absolutely disgusting and photo buckets should be ashamed of themselves, really. They should say, yeah, okay, they can, they're quite within the right to say, yep, yeah, no more freebies. Totally understand that. They've been throttling back their bandwidth on those anyway for the last couple of years. Um, but they really shouldn't just go, right, sorry, axe, piss off, basically. It's just what they've done to people. Uh, they should have said, look, you've got an option. If you just want like image hosting on other sites, it's $20 a year. At least give people the option, not try to rape them with $400 a year. It's absolutely disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourselves. I know you're a business, but there are ways of doing things, you know, and that's definitely not it. So uh, uh, we're recommending now that... Um, uh, everyone goes over to uh, Flickr or um, another service like that. Flickr is free. You can get pro accounts with them as well, but uh, they've been going donkey's years, and I think they're, I think they're, I think they're even bigger than uh, Photo Bucket, to be honest with you, because they do a lot of. Um, a lot of uh, photography artists and things like that use them as well. So I recommend it's over to flickr.com, which is F L I C K R.com. Uh, register on there. Once you, the process is a bit different to photo, photo bucket, once you get used to it, it's easy. Um, you know, the workflow is easy enough for, to, to do. They've got a handy little app, which is better than photo buckets for sure. And the other good thing is very slick, very sleek, and uh, the uh, images upload 10, 15 times faster than they do on photo bucket. If you're on a Mac, photo bucket on a Mac it is a nightmare because you can't log in properly and you can't upload stuff properly. You have to go back doorway. And it's been a pain in the ass for two years, really. And uh, I should have changed really a long time ago, but been with them for so long, you know. So anyway, yeah, so goodbye photo bucket. And nice to know you and adios, you know. Um, so everyone get over to Flickr, get over to another service as soon as you can. You're gonna lose your images if you haven't done so already. Uh, some other ISM news as well. 
Uh, next month, we hope, fingers crossed, um, I've approached a couple of guys uh, from ISM to help out on the uh, new show uh, to add a couple of new sections as well. So maybe just to beef up the new show with a couple of new sections. We're hopefully gonna do a new kit release section um, where all the new kit releases, talk about the new kit releases from that month. And also we'll have a walk around the forum section where um, we've got someone who will go around and you know tell us about what's happening on the forum, news on the forum, some of the threads that are posted, go through some of the GVs and SIGs progress and things like that. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, we're gonna be sitting down over the next few weeks and just ironing out um, how we're gonna do it and how it's gonna slot into the show and everything. But something to look forward to anyway, and there's something new in the new show. Um, also, with the glass of ice, don't forget Paul and uh, the live cruise Friday night live at the bench show uh, every Friday night, uh, 7.30 GMT. They go live for three or four hours. Uh, they have prizes to give away. They have special guests. We've had some great special guests uh, for interviews and everything. Uh, there's always prizes from e-models, veteran S models, aircraft, ultimate modern products. We all contribute product, um, prizes every week. Uh, to that so there's always something to win and it's nothing simpler than just writing a number in the comments box on on YouTube as well That's how you get entered into the draw. So all you got to do is just watch and you get in and you can enter yourself in easy as that um, But uh, there's a se de section dedicated to new kit releases on that um, Which is obviously something that we're hoping to transpose onto the monthly show as well just to tack on on for that But yeah, please do tune in for that every Friday night at 730 GMT uh, right, okay, that's all the ISM and UMP news. I think now we're going to go over to a review I've done of the Suji Burrito Thin File. Welcome back to this International Scale Modeler. I'm Lee. Today we're going to do a review of this, which is the Suji Burrito Thin File. And uh, this is something uh, picked up a while ago and we started selling on uh, Ultimate Modeling Products website, umpretail.com. And the reason we did that because uh, we found there's a little niche here for, for little files like thin files in modeling. And I think they're a must have, to be honest with you. Uh, but this is the Suji Burrito thin file. Um, I think there's a few other brands out there, not particularly good, uh, that I've seen anyway. They're usually quite rough. Uh, now this just comes in a, a plain packet, as you can see on the overhead. Comes in a plain packet with some cardboard backing and some uh, instructions and uh, a few things on the back there telling you uh, instances where you would use the file. Um, it gives you a few little facts about it. It's four millimeters wide and one millimeter thick. Um, and as you can see there, what it looks like on the side. And I would imagine that's actual actual size, give or take. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up. Um, and as you can see, it's just a simple affair. I think once you've opened it, that's it. You, know, you won't have the packet anymore. So we're just gonna pop that over to the side. Oh, that's stuck in there very well. Okay. Right, so now I've just pulled that off. There you go. Oh well, okay. I'll put that back later. Uh, so, uh, okay, so you, inside this, then you've got the file itself inside this piece of paper here. This very nice uh, piece of paper, which you can just pull out and unwrap. Uh, and there's nothing on there of any significance whatsoever. Now, what I've just done there is something you shouldn't do. This is plastic bit had stuck to the uh, inside of the packet, and as I pulled it out, it's pulled the plastic bit down the, the metal shaft of this here, but it's smooth enough that we'll be able to push it back up with a little bit of patience, so I shall do that at a later date. Now, uh, the feel of it uh, is really nice. I mean, the, the plastic is very tactile, it's lovely to hold. You can feel it. You can feel it sits in the in the in the palm of the hand, and your, your finger would rest on there to, to use the file itself. Now I'm just going to zoom you in a bit, and so you can see a bit of this. And there you go. And you can see how fine uh, that filing is. The actual metal files. You've got a bit on the side as well, a little bit on each side, and you've got the main file as well. Now. I'm going to compare this to the Tamiya um, Basic Pro that I've got, Basic File Pro set that I've got. Uh, I can't believe how fine this actually is and I can't wait to test this on a bit of plastic. Uh, but to give you a comparison, uh, I have uh, this here which is the Tamiya Basic File set and I've had this for donkey's years, uh, about four or five years. And in here you've got some files as well, a pretty much similar thing to what the Suji Burrito one is, as you can see. Uh, lengthwise, the Suji Burrito one does normally stop there, uh, as you can see, so it's quite a lot longer, so it has a lot more play on the, the file itself. 
Um, this is uh, a lot rougher, the Tamiya one, even though it's quite, it's got a nice cross cut pattern, it is quite rough. Uh, it's wider uh, than the Suji Burrito and I, I would say it's just about 1.2 millimeters instead of 1.1. The metal itself is uh, reasonably nice on the Tamiya one, but that aside, uh, the metal on this feels of a complete different quality. It really does. It's got a nice little bit of flex in there, which you will need, but the, the cross cutting on this is so fine, uh, I cannot see it uh, with the naked eye. That's how fine it is. Absolutely fantastic little um, file already. I really like the look of this already. So um, it's a shame that I pulled it out the, the thing out of the packet wrong, but I can fix that, so that's not a problem. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna get a bit of plastic and then you can see on the camera how it deals with it. Now, these files, um, I'm gonna get a bit of, a couple of different types of plastic here. Okay, and we can see how it reacts with each one of them. Uh, so I've got, I think that's an old Airfix sprue. Uh, I think that is a tan model sprue and uh, I don't know, that's from an eggplant, Hazagawa. Okay, so you can see the different ones I've got there. Um, and I'm just gonna zoom you out a bit. Okay, just so we've got a little bit more working area. Um, now, what I'll do is I'll try on each bit of plastic and uh, what, these, what we'd use these for is to complement a range of sanders. Obviously, got the UMP sticks uh, and everything, and this is to complement them. I mean, a lot of these, even though we do do the thin files, there's still places that these can't go, and this will be perfect for that. Uh, but uh, it's one of those files that I would, I would say that... Um, I wouldn't want to use it heavily for heavy use because I wouldn't want to ruin it. It's actually very nice indeed. So let's go ahead and, and do a couple of bits of plastic. And uh, there is a seam line here, as you can see, just on this bit here. So I'm just going to file that down. And you can hear that. Now it's not a fast working file because it is... The cross, the cross uh, hatching is so fine on it. Okay, so there you go. So that seam line is all but gone. Uh, and then you come in with a, a UMP sander to finish that off if you were doing uh, wide areas or anything. But you're not. The whole point of this is, this is for small inaccessible areas uh, on your model. Uh, as I say, that's why they've only made it four millimeters thick and one, uh, what, four millimeters wide, sorry, and one millimeter thick. And it can get into all sorts of places, as you can see, and we're having the smooth edges we can get right into these little areas like this. And you're going to, let's say you need to just take off that little bit there. A little seam there. Interesting what, it, what sort of marks it leaves on the clear. But I'm not putting any pressure on that at all. I'm just letting the file do the work. And uh, that's come out not too bad, even on clear plastic. So, Let's just have a There's a little seam on this one. I'm just going to try and get you in a bit closer on this one so you can see. Okay. Just see a little seam there, hopefully. Okay, so I'm just going to... I can only just see it myself, so I'm just going to... This is how it would act in a very tight and confined small space, which is what you'd use it for. And again, just letting the file do the work. No pressure whatsoever. And that's not a bad finish. What are you looking at there? Uh, I don't know if you can see that at all. I'm gonna try and get you in closer, but it might go blurry. Yeah, it's, unfortunately, it's not handling the macro too well there. There you go, that's a bit better. Uh, hopefully you can see that. You may or may not to, it's this, this section here. Um, it has taken it down, and it's taken it down to a reasonably nice finish that you'd be able to get away with uh, by painting and uh, once you'd uh, put your primer down, as if you use something like the UMP um, Ultimate Primer, that was some micro filler as well, and uh, that will cover that uh, fine. So, because this will be for small inaccessible areas where you're not gonna be able to get a normal uh, sander or a normal file for that matter. Um, and I like that a lot. I think the, I mean, 
If you uh, were to buy one of these, you'd be surprised at the, the, the finest, the, the milling that must have gone into that, the precision on the, the cross hatching there is very nice indeed. Very great, great little file. Um, and uh, these are sold on ultimateumpretail.com and they are 19, I think they're 1969, 19 pounds 69. They're not cheap. Uh, they certainly aren't cheap, uh, but with uh, a lot of Japanese metals, you do get what you pay for um, and it is a quality, it feels like a quality tool in your hand as well. The metal is, is uh, just feel like something else, it really does. I wish I could read Japanese to see what it says on the, on the cover to be honest with you, but uh, I have not a clue on that, so maybe someone can enlighten us. Uh, but uh, I think for, for the £19, that will last a lifetime. Um, this Tamiya one, as I say, I've had for, or oh, it must be, four and a half years now and uh, it's been used a bit but it's very rough compared to that it's extremely rough um, and the uh, the uh, edging on the on the file at South Cross actually is starting to go on the end um, and uh, again I used to use this just for small inaccessible spaces that will be consigned now to the uh, second hand drawer I think uh, this will now be my weapon of choice. It's absolutely, really is a quality bit of kit. And if you do get one yourself, you will understand what I'm saying. I'll challenge you to say otherwise, to be honest with you. Uh, but very nice. It is expensive, but it, uh, looking at it, it will last a lifetime if you use it correctly um, and look after it as with any tools, really. So that is that is a thumbs up for me. And I know we sell them and everything, but to that aside, it really is a, a nice bit of kit and it does feel nice in the hand. It's the right length. The Tamiya one is very short. Um, I haven't used a trumpeter one, so I can't say about that. But this sits, you know, you've got the end of the, the um, uh, file, the butt end of the file, that would normally be covered all the way to the end, that sits in the palm of your hand like that. And as you can see, you can just rest your finger on there. There's a little groove. Uh, if we just go to the overhead quickly, there's a little, as you can see, a little fan there. And your finger just sits on top of that perfectly. I mean, obviously it depends on your, the size of your hands, but your finger does sit on that perfectly and it is just right. Very, very um, ergonomic and uh, very tactile as well. So very nice tool to use and that will definitely be getting some use, that's for sure, because I'm sure I've got lots of little projects that can uh, I can use that on. But that is the Suji Burrito Thin File, available at umpretail.com for just over 19 pounds. Um, but that's definitely a thumbs up for me. And for a tool, um, that's an eight and a half, nine out of 10 for me. Uh, so until next time, take care, bye bye. Right, so there you go. That's a review of that little file there. Very handy indeed, and definitely something worth having in my little pots that I showed you there. Um, I've got all my little handy knickknacks in those things that I just need to get to ASAP. Um, but yeah, I should, have used it several, I should be using that several times. I had another one, like the Tamiya one, but um, very similar, but I think this one's just that much better quality and everything as well. Anyway, so we're gonna go to the ISM GBs and SIGs now. Right, GBs and SIGs going on at the moment. I've done a big, blather about them earlier on in the show so you're quite welcome to uh, go back and review that um, but uh, at the moment what's going on at the moment is the Warring Weather GB uh, which started on the 1st of May and goes to the 31st of August so there's six weeks left on that um, that's quite simple that one is any kit of any genre as long as it has some type of weather in the name uh, in English or translated from any other language which would mean the same thing like lightning, whirlwind, tempest etc. I think Ra'am in, in uh, is Israel and Hebrew it means um, thunder uh, that sort of thing so you know there's lots and lots of there's, this, there's actually a thread there that says you can use this 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 and this but people have thrown ideas in as well which is really good. Um, the other well, SIG that's going at the moment is the Holy Land SIG that started 1st of July a couple of weeks ago and that runs until the 31st of September so 10 weeks left on that one. Um, that's basically anything Israeli IAI or IDF um, and uh, that's sponsored by Ultimate Modern Products and the prizes are these for first second and third um, and uh, yeah that's a good one the thing is I've been trying since we started ISM I've been trying to get uh, an Israeli SIG or GB into the curriculum for well three four years wherever long we've been going and it's all been voted out and this time it's been voted in and it's the one time that I haven't got any bloody time to do it. I've got loads of uh, Israeli subjects that I want to build because I love the colour scheme to be honest with you um, but I just, I'm, I don't think I'm going to have time to enter. I'm going to try, I'm going to try. Still got time, I need to 10 weeks. Um, the other SIG that uh, just finished recently is the Fleet Air Arm SIG, uh, FAA all the way. 
Yeah, finished on the 30th of June, and that was basically any subject that was in the UK's fleet air run. Uh, the real veal show for that will be up, or the very short ones like the other two, will be up in the next few days for that as well. So we'll be announcing the winners in the next few days for that. Uh, the next GB we have, uh, our SMGB is in September, and it will be the Feline Fever GB. That's going to be basically any vehicle, aircraft, any genre with anything feline in its name, such as Panther, Leopard, Tiger, Tomcat, you know, aircraft, plane, car, whatever. Uh, so there's loads again, it's a nice big open GP and I'm hoping to enter into that one as well. So I should have more time in September, we shall see. Um, we also have got a couple of non-ISM SIGs on the forum going on as well. We've obviously got um, the summer sci-fi SIG and that goes on until the 30th of September. So there's still 10 weeks left on that. It's been going for whew, six weeks already, I think four weeks, something like that. Anyway, uh, you can see my entry over there and we'll, uh, we'll do that in my little, um, very little tiny um, at the bench thing um, and that's run by Lysis and with several prizes and everything from forum members there and there's also the end is nay uh, which runs until the 31st of July so only two weeks left on that that's basically any subject that involves a horse and that's more of a, a fun sig a non-ISM fun sig um, so that's that's the GBs and sigs on ISM at the moment right now we're going to go over to Paul who's going to do a review and show how uh, to use the ultimate gloss black primer that's just come out over to Paul Hi everybody, Paul ISM. Today we've got another product test slash review for you. Uh, today we're going to be showing you the new Ultimate Modern Products Gloss Black Primer. It's available in 120ml and 60ml bottles, 9.49 and 5.49. And it's available direct from us at www.umpretail.com. Um, now, we've had our primers on the market for some time now. They're produced by a very well-known company in the United States. Uh, they've proven very, very successful and popular over the time we've had them now, which is well over a year. Uh, before that, the original product proved unbelievably successful and is arguably the best polyurethane primer on the market. So, we've got the new Gloss Black Primer. Uh, it's been out for a little bit now, and I'm going to put it to the test today. So, this is ideal. The difference is, a few people want to mention they're a little bit confused about a Gloss Black Primer. Uh, we did a normal primer, which is a satin matty fur. Um, this is gloss. Now, the idea of a gloss, it's ideal for underneath uh, high shine metallics. Uh, usually calls for a lacquer or an enamel based product to get that high shine to put the metal finish on it this solves that in a much safer and friendlier format now i use primers a lot for uh things like on this bike i've got the new tamiya uh africa twin bike now all the black work on that all the framework everything has been done in primers different primers ump primer mr surfacer and if you look at that part just there that is gloss black and that is our primer so you can see all the different effects you get off the different colors so i utilize that quite a lot on things like that uh, a lot of the metallics like the engine uh, they were primed in the gloss black as well and then put over the top and it gives the base color uh, the base color really helps the uh, metallic sheen uh, show through so it's a very very useful product to have uh, in your arsenal uh, like I say, I use all different kinds of primers, love our primer, absolutely superb, very easy to spray, very, very forgiving, self level, and you can't really go wrong doing it. And to get the gloss black in there as well is absolutely superb, invaluable. So what we're going to do, we're going to head over to the spray booth, we're going to have a little bit of a, a spray, see how it sprays down, and probably compare it to the original uh, primer as well, so you can see the colour difference in there. So there we go, so we'll head over to the spray booth and have a look. Okay, we're over in the spray booth, uh, I've got the primer you've got the 120mm and the 60mm we're going to use the 120mm for this one only because it's my one that's already opened uh, we've got my test plane uh, Steve A8 Mark II which is here uh, I've got one of the wings ready it's already been tested with some paint I've just flattened it back with a UMP sponge in preparation for this we'll also use the uh, standard black primer as well and see if we can see a difference between them both there is because I know there's a tonal difference and see uh, what well, they compare like next to each other. Spraying it, I'm going to be using my UMP Apex. This is my go to brush for quite a lot of things now, to be honest. Um, very happy how this has gone. Uh, absolutely fantastic airbrush. Very easy to use, very easy to clean, very forgiving. And with that progressive needle tip, it'll take a whole range of different paints. Absolutely fantastic brush. And it's just so simple to clean. It really is. And absolutely loves our primer. So we're about 24 psi. The airbrush is nicely cleaned out. I'm going to pop my booth on. Hopefully it's not too noisy. Beautiful summer's day today, so all the windows and door are open.
Always give it a good shake. Always needs a good shake. Pop it in, you don't need a lot. Always test your spray. There we go, spot on. And then pick a point. So what we're going to do, we will prime the end of the wing. So very first coat, nice and thin. Just a nice thin mist. And build it up slowly until you get nice, even coverage. And you can come back in a little bit thicker. And then you can use the airbrush to dry the paint should you wish. You know, you see a nice glossy finish. We're going to dry it off and then we give it another light coat. And that'll be it done. Simple as that. We're going to mist it on again. Then come back slightly heavier. Superb, I'll pop that to one side to dry. As always, it's just as easy and simple to clean. Anything you've got in your colour cup, uh, fire away into your airbrush cleaning station cup. Over your UMP cleaner, in the cup, in your brush, give it a good small round. Really is that quick and simple. I'm just going to knock that off for a second so I can torture you guys unhindered. There we are, wipe your brush off. A little bit of a backflow, did anybody ever tell you backflow and damages your airbrush? It doesn't. Tip away any excess. Fire away the paint that's left. And that should be fairly clean there we go spotless inside absolutely spotless as you can see we've got a nice gloss coat it's still drying so we can help it out a little bit give it a little bit of air help it dry off and then what we're going to do we're going to come back in with the normal black as well and as you saw the gloss went down nice and simple build up in a nice light mist then come back slightly heavier making sure you get the coverage of the whole wing first um, and then come back slightly wetter to give it a nice sheen now, in about 30 minutes, I should be okay to sand. Although, I tend to leave it overnight if I can. And, um, yeah, you won't have any problems with peeling. Uh, when you're trying to sand it, your feather lovely uh, and everything else. If you do have any issues, it's more than likely something you've done to a degree. Uh, maybe a bit of, uh, you know, uh, fingerprint grease on the plane. Might be some mold release. Or other foreign object kind of thing on there that's causing an issue. What we're going to do now, we're going to come back with the normal black. I'm just going to go up that line there. Not got my booth on, but I'll be okay for a few seconds. We'll just show the difference between the satin and the glossier effect of the two primers. There we go. I'm going to dry it off. So you can see the normal primer does stay glossy for a little bit. Airbrush is excellent for drying off paint. There we go, there's both primers dry. Easy, quick, simple to spray, and you can see the difference. So we've got the nice satin matte effect of the standard UMP primer, which is this one. Um, and then the nice gloss effect of the gloss primer. So you can see the tone differences. And like I say, like on the biker I've sprayed it, you can see the effect. Uh, different parts, even if it's only a subtle change, it does act to the overall effect. Now to lay a metallic coat over the top of that, um, that's going to look absolutely fantastic and I will show you that in use now. I'll pick a metallic colour and we'll spray it over the top um, 
and they can show you the effect of it. But you can see the marked difference between the two primers. One is significantly more glossier than the other. And like I say, really quick, really easy and simple to spray. It's very forgiving. If you do happen to put a slightly thicker coat on by accident, um, it will self-level and it will not give you any dramas. I don't put it on thin, I know how to use this stuff and use it for long enough. As long as you get that mist coat down to get the coverage, you can come in a little bit thicker then afterwards and you have no issues, but you can see the difference there between the two colours. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean my brush out and I'm going to grab a metallic colour and we'll spray it over the top of the gloss black base and uh, see how it looks. Okay, so I've got AK Interactive's Extreme Metal Chrome. Uh, these have more and more become my go-to metallic colours. Seems to be proving a bit more reliable than Alclads, which just don't seem to give the same ugh, consistent finish they used to. I still use them both, but more and more becoming my go-to. Here's the Apex again, again showing its versatility. It's been thoroughly cleaned out. Obviously these are enamel-based products, make sure you've got any trace of existing uh, paint out of there. I'm going to put the booth back on again, unfortunately. And we're going to lower the pressure on the compressor. Hopefully not too long, give that a good shake. And pop a little bit of the colour cup. Yeah, that should do us. Probably won't, I'll probably run out halfway through. As always, check your flow, make sure it's coming through nicely. And again, mist it on. So beautiful high shine we've got already. Just a couple of light coats. Beautiful finish. Absolutely beautiful high sheen finish. Now I'm going to spray over the, all the black primer, but because of the, the nature of the cameras, you probably won't see any difference to the naked eye. But to me, there isn't. There already is. It's nowhere near as shiny. I'm going to leave a slight demarcation between the primers. Right, there's a massive difference between the colours, and you can see it on camera. The right side is a lot uh, shinier than the left. See, it's a lot more of a matte effect, so you can see the difference. The uh, the gloss underneath actually goes. You're gonna put a little bit more on this wing. Very very light passes. They look very nice and slow. And there's a massive difference between those two. They really really. Just turn my vent off, so you can hear me talk. Clean my airbrush out quickly. Uh, I can do that in a bit. So, you can see the difference between using the gloss black primer and the standard black primer. Now, I often use this to my advantage. Uh, using the same paints, um, you can still uh, use the same uh, ba uh, base colour metal, but different primers get different effects. But you can see the mark difference, and that shows you why using the gloss black is really beneficial to the metallic finishes. I use a lot of metallics. I've got the full range of Alclad, Extreme Metal, Buffer Balls, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Hobby Super Metallics, you name them, I've got them, Citadels, a lot. And I use them on the bikes, and literally between each different component, I use a slightly different shade, and just doing that adds a lot of tonal variation interest to the kit. So I know how to use these paints, I know how to use them effectively, um, and you can see the difference just by using a different primer. Uh, that's still a very nice effect, you know, it's a very good effect, but you can see the difference of using the gloss black on the chrome. Now it tends to be only really the high shines, but I tend to use it a little bit more on some as well, again to get that different tone of variation. So I'm using a different primer, but the same colour of paint, and it does give a lovely uh, slight tone of variation, but that definitely says it all just there. I can see it on camera. Uh, this looks a lot more silver as well, this is obviously a lot more dull. So there you go, mark difference, it really, really is. <clears throat> right, so there you go, there's the gloss primer in action. It shows you the difference you get using the same colour paint and a different primer. It gives you completely different paint effects. They both shine, but obviously the far tip of the wing with the gloss black primer shines even more. So very, very versatile. 
and a very useful product. Like I say, often using the same colour with a different primer, you get a nice effect. So if you're doing bike engines, anything high shine, uh, you're going to get a real nice effect. Uh, both primers, absolutely fantastic. They spray the same, 20 to 30 psi, uh, point three or bigger needle, and uh, nice mist coats on begin with. Build it up slowly, and you get an absolutely flawless, very, very forgiving self level finish. It's definitely the best polyurethane primer out there, bar none, and uh, it's got a proven track record uh, for a number of years now. So there you go. Like I said, the 120 ml bottle is £9.49, and the 60 ml bottle is £5.49 from umpretail.com. And over to our site, have a look at loads of other products on there as well. Loads of new products in the pipeline coming out in the future as well, one very soon. So keep an eye out for that as well. And uh, I'd like to see what you guys can do with this. If you've got it, let's see what you can do. Let's see different metallic finishes. Like I say, don't always change your metallic colour, just change the primer underneath and you'll get a completely different tone. So there you go. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys again. Take care. Bye bye. So there you go, that's our, that's our new Ultimate Gloss Black Primer. As you can see, it's very good stuff. It's got its own little niche. Um, and if you're like me, uh, maybe it'll go over the top, uh, underneath alclads and things like that as well. Um, you know, I use, I use Gloss Black, uh, well, on things like that. I've done about three of these uh, glossy, chromey um, rockets lately, um, well, over the last year or so, and I've used a, a, a Gloss Black, uh, black kit primer so now i've got our own one we can use that so that's great um but now we're going to go to forum news and we're going to go to the monthly draw right okay so the monthly draw so for may we had from e-models uh gave us the hobby boss brand new 148 su 174 m4 fitter um and from ultimate we had a full set of weathering washes and so we'll do the from e-models the winner of the hobby boss brand new 148 su 174 m4 fitter is Shortcomings. Uh, shortcomings is from Cockgrave in the UK, so well done to you. You get this nice little kit and everything, um, and it's meant, it is meant to be quite nice as well. So uh, well done, Shortcomings. You get the uh, Hobby Boss Fitter. Okay, and for the uh, ultimate full set of weathering washes, the winner of that is Grady, uh, and Grady is from North Carolina in the USA. So well done, Grady. You get those full set of washes. Uh, if both of you could PVM me or the water. PM me your, I told you I'm tired today, PM me your names and addresses on the International Scale Modeler Forum, that would be fantastic. And uh, as soon as we've got that, we'll get these prizes out to ASAP. Uh, this month's prizes are from EU Models, generously uh, given, is Dragon's brand new 135 Magac 3 with ERA, e -R -A, armor. Uh, and from UMP is a, another full set of washes. Uh, now, if you don't know how to enter the competition thread uh, or anything like that, you can't do it on Facebook. You can only do it on the forum. All you need to do is just register on our interscalemodeler.com. Go over there, just post on the competition thread for the month that we're in. So it's July at the moment. And all you've got to do is just put OK, entered, yes, please, whatever you want on there. It doesn't matter. As long as you make a post on that thread, you are included. And the number get your uh, the numbers get pulled out by a random number generator each month. Um, so it could be number one or it could be number 300. It depends. And it is completely random as well. We've had prizes where they've been right next to each other, you know, as well. So uh, so if, get, your name, uh, get your name down to it. And we do that every single month. So you can enter every single month. Uh, you can only enter once, though, each month. Um, so yeah, so head on over to InstagramModel.com, find the competitions thread and enter in that. It's very easily done. Right, okay, so now uh, I think that is it for the ISM thing. For the updates, yes it is indeed. Uh, we are going to go over to uh, my very short at the bench build reviews, what I've done lately. Okay, so here's my little build section. Um, it is a little build section. It's just something, things I've managed to do here and there. Um, first off, I will show you this, uh, which is the uh, 1350 Pegasus Cosmostrator. Um, now this is the one that I've had a problem with with the paints uh, recently. Uh, put down some nice gloss black finish. It did need a lot of filler on the seams, I have to say. Um, and uh, but it's literally I had it built in obviously a few hours um, the thing that I had to do uh, wait for the most was the filler because I had to fill wait overnight sand it down and then fill again just to make sure because there was a lot of seam lines on there you know which is a thing with Pegasus and also there was major gap going to the overhead this is probably whiting it right out actually uh, let's see if I can zoom you in a bit there you go um, and uh, all down here there are seam lines and massive gaps 
the uh, the wing, the roots there, the nacelle roots and everything. But they've come out quite nice, uh, and uh, there's there's just no seam lines left anymore, um, as you can see. Very very simple model uh, to build, uh, but it, as I say, it does need a lot of filling and things like that, and filling and fastening about. It's a lot of lot of circles and things like that, a lot of cylinders, cylindrical shapes. Uh, so it's going to be, I, I built this just for a quick thing because I wanted it on into the summer sci-fi SIG. Uh, as I say, I've got, I've got to this point now, um, but it's so hot. When I started spraying, uh, I got the base down and everything. I waited 24 hours, cured it, let it cure. Um, and I'll put the Alclad, this is Alclad, and the Alclads were drying so fast that they were dead bone dry before they hit the, the top of the... The model and if I got too close they just pulled and looked stupid um, but I don't know if you can hear this I'll put this near to the mic hold on okay you can see that I'm just rubbing that bit there and that's like sandpaper and that's our clad so that's meant to be you know shiny flat the, the base coat's fantastic uh, really nice and flat but that our clad top coat has not gone on very well at all so I'm debating whether to just put another base coat down. I think I'm gonna base coat it again, uh, put another good base when we get a cold day. Uh, fingers crossed we'll get one soon. Um, and uh, then I'll uh, redo the Alclad, because I do like Alclads, I have to say. Or I may try something else, I don't know. I've got another chance, I suppose, haven't I? Um, you get oh, The only other thing is the little glass bit, which is pretty much useless and everything you can see over the head there. Um, it's not very good, but it'll do. This, as I say, this was just a quick thing. And you get this, which is the uh, nose cone, which I have stabbed in my hand uh, twice now, and it goes right in as well. It really does go right in. Uh, so that's that. Uh, as I say, it's literally I've just got to make get put another. I'm going to put another base coat down, put another coat of paint on there, and then gloss it, and that'll be done. Um, so uh, fingers crossed on that one. Another little thing I've been doing is this, um, and I started doing this because when I was on one of my trips away. Um, and I was doing the uh, and I was doing it in my cab in my van. I stay sleeping overnight when I'm on transports. Um, and uh, good old Darth. And I was going to keep him in you know, the overhead there. And I was going to keep him in the van once he's done. Uh, all I've got to do now. This, this was just a quick thing to keep me busy while I was away on on one of my trips. Um, you can see he's done. I've got his side skirts and things like this and everything and uh, obviously he'll go on my bench or in my van I don't know yet all I've got to do is put the decals on uh, these uh, things I should go for the water slides rather than the stickers um, and maybe I might put a, a coat over as well a gloss coat or something like that just to hold those uh, that hold those in but there is it's like four separate different types of black on the, the paintwork you can have a look over the head um, you can see that there, there's several different shades and glossiness and satin finishes and things on there. Uh, it doesn't stand particularly well, I have to say. Uh, it does, there does seem to be a way that... I know when I reviewed this, my original plan was to um, fill it in, fill the, fill the, the thing in and everything, because you've got that sits on the back with these over the sides, and it looks a bit unreal and a bit plasticky, really. It's one of the... Not a great daft, but it's still it's a nice addition to the collection anyway. I've, I'm going to collect all these Bandai things. So, um, but uh, yeah, so I don't know what to do about that at the moment. Whether I'm going to gloss that over or anything. Uh, it's the same as normal normal Bandai stuff. Went together exceptionally well. All clicked together. Obviously, I've glued it together. But, yeah, very easy to do. And the other thing, the only other thing I've got going on at the moment is, uh, if you haven't seen it yet. Do go over and have a look at the uh, poacher, uh, the 1 8 Lamborghini poacher, uh, that, uh, and I'm doing a build series on that. And uh, I did a full inbox review, and the box is enormous, you can have a look at the review. Uh, but uh, I've got this far so far, I've got the inside of it, I don't want to put my hands on it because if you've watched the video, you'll see that uh, the finger, fingers do mark this, this stuff. So you can see I've got the roof lining in, and I have got. The dashboard sorted and uh, that needed a bit of work I have to say uh, as you, if you've watched the series um, then you will see that I next time I will definitely paint this uh, this will be painted for sure um, by myself uh, looks like the steering wheels move you've got this little metal thing in there uh, but it's coming together nicely I've done all the decals in there in the dashboard and uh, we've also got the seats here like so and they're quite nice um, as you can see, it still a bit, looks a bit plasticky, this bit. Uh, I think 
I wanted to do a build series where I built it out of the box uh, so that uh, people who thought about buying one, because I'm sure a lot of non-modelers buy these um, just because of their size. Um, it's a one eighth you know, scale, so it's gonna be very big indeed. And um, I think that um, I wanted to do an out of the box one. I've got it very cheap, as I've explained, so it's, it's okay to do that. And I think that I would wait for a sale and I'll probably buy another one and then do that as a, a full uh, model kit from start to finish. Um, the only thing I probably wouldn't do is paint the, the bodywork. I'd probably go for the orange bodywork one um, because this is quite a nice color. I don't think I'd want to mess with that because the actual bodywork itself is to seem Really good, very heavy, solid chunks of metal. Really is proper die cast. So anyway, that's my very small bench update. I will be doing another build update on the Lamborghini. I would hope uh, I'm away to Valencia uh, in a week's time. So when I get back from that, I'm gonna go away for another four weeks. So I should do a build update on that and hopefully get some more of the body done and, and things like that. But that's gonna be a good, I reckon 10 part series. Uh, but I'm enjoying it. I can't wait to get back at it. I just haven't had time to sit down and do it I've got loads of crap for it at the other end of my desk there. So uh, but yeah, so that's it So we're gonna take you back to the show. That's my bench update. Not big. I know but there you go right, back to the show Well, there you go as you can tell not a lot from me. I have been quite busy here um, doing gardening made a lot of it. It's why I'm so red um, but um, it's been really hot here as well, and I'm having a real problem with the paint uh, atomizing before it hits the model. It's been 39 for, well, wavering between 32 degrees and 39 degrees for the last, what, four or five weeks. And I'm not saying that just to say, oh, look, we've got lovely sun. It's been very hot. Um, and the problem is I can't keep this room, my studio cool, it's got no air con on it or anything like that. So I can't keep it cool to, to the paint. And uh, I've had a problem with this, as I showed you in the video, that it's atomizing before it hits it, so I'm not getting that smooth finish that I want. Uh, so uh, it makes spraying very hard. So what I'm thinking to do is maybe building a couple of models up. Um, if I can just do the paint, uh, the cockpits, that would be great. But um, I'm having a real problem getting the paint to to be wet when it hits the, the model. Um, and it's it's not good, it's, some of it feels like sandpaper, it's not very nice at all. Still, we'll get over it, there must be ways around it because uh, the Spanish are great modelers um, and they do it all year round. So uh, I'm gonna go into a couple of Spanish forums and get some hints and tips, I think. Uh, anyway, uh, we're gonna go over to Paul's section of the new show now, so over to Paul. Okay, thanks Lee. Right, so welcome to my section of the new show. Uh, very exciting month, uh, a couple of weeks back, myself and the live crew guys from ISM, uh, on our Friday Night Live show, did a charity auction for Models for Heroes. Absolutely blown away, and I, I really was on the night. We expected to get about a thousand pound. We already had 550 from preliminary uh, donations, which was amazing. Uh, on the night, we made 2,240 pounds, which is just absolutely mind blowing. It really is. The generosity shown by you guys out there is astounding. It really, really is. People were paying 10 times the cost of some kits. And a few guys, and you know you are, they donated the kits back to Models for Heroes as well. It's, it's generosity uh, beyond what I thought would happen. Uh, you should be very, very proud. Anybody that was involved or has been involved, we should be very, very proud of yourselves. Give yourselves a pat on the back because what we've done for this charity is absolutely superb. Uh, thank you to everybody that watched, donated, participated, made a donation bidded on the auction, all things, the live crew guys for helping me, and a big thanks to Malcolm as well. Malcolm Childs, the founder of Models for Heroes, he's doing outstanding work there for our veterans, and uh, he really is a nice guy, and he's doing a superb, fantastic job. I know a lot of guys have sent kits, they've made money for donations, paints, flying hours, tools. If you've got anything you're not using, donate it to these guys. Go to the Models for Heroes website, uh, the address is on there. Anything you need to send off, just send it off to them. I had a couple of car kits the other day. thought, I'm not going to build those. They went as well. Um, I'm not going to build them, so you might as well. And that, that's how people need to think, you know, do I really need this? Send it off to me a few quid's worth or what have you. And, uh, yeah, make a difference to this charity. Malcolm's done a fantastic job. We interviewed Malcolm as well the week before the auction. Uh, it's on the channel. If you go back on the Friday night, uh, he gives a lot of information about the charity and where it's going and so on and so forth and it was just amazing that night was absolutely mine but i couldn't sleep that night when it came off air and uh, i was blown away you guys did absolutely superb so thank you from the bottom of my heart and Lee's as well thank you very very much and the live crew guys superb all the guys i hang out with 
they donated all those kits that were auctioned that night and there was 26 auctions in total in the end so again absolutely fantastic really is good well done guys thank you very much uh as usual the live shows have been carrying on as usual they're getting more and more popular and uh really getting into the uh the string of things now i've been doing it for just over a year now it's gone quick uh so we're over probably 70 odd shows now including the tuesdays we used to do and uh it's fantastic it really is you guys in the chat uh adding a lot to the show as well as the live crew guys helping me as well couldn't do it without them and thank you to our sponsors as well uh, we picked up a new sponsor a couple of weeks ago, International Military Model World Sales. Uh, Steve over there and the guys uh, have been donating kits to us. Uh, and prom and let's promote the, the show on their page as well. Let's head over to International Military Model World. That's the actual Facebook page. And there's a separate one, which is a selling site, International Military Model World Sales. Head on over there as well and say hello and see what they've got to offer. So they've been sponsoring us. We've got our current emodels.co.uk. Peter emodels is fantastic. He's been donating now since the very beginning. Uh, so hats off to him. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, always donates great prizes. Thank you very much, Pete. We really do appreciate it. I wouldn't mind an emodels mug, though, if I can get one. I wouldn't mind one. Uh, we've got Nikki of Veterans Models on Facebook as well. Very, very generous. Always up front with the, the kits. And again, get some fantastic prizes. Thank you very much. We've got Martin at www.air-craft.net. Again, Martin's a great guy. I've known Martin for some time now. And uh, he's donated some fantastic prizes as well, including this week's one, which is a hard steam Steamback Evolution uh, this Friday. Absolutely beautiful prize. Uh, and then we've got myself and the guys at the live show. The guys uh, stump up prize every now and then. And, uh, you know, we're a bit short one week. Somebody always donates a prize. That's very, very good of them. And myself at umpretail.com. Um, we, we do a rotation from weeks. But I think we've got four, five sponsors now uh, that are rotating weekly, and it's fantastic. We do appreciate all you guys sponsoring us, as do the guys that win the prize and the girls that win the prizes. Um, so thank you very much. So, yeah, tune in on Fridays, half seven UK, half eight Europe, one thirty Central US, every Friday night. We're on for three to four hours. Uh, we've got new kits released. Tim looks at those. You've got Dan looking at your work on the forum. Uh, we look at what everyone's been buying, buildings, a bit of chit-chat between us all. There's competitions and uh, the odd guest every now and then as well. I've got some guests lined up over the next couple of weeks. Uh, these are just regular YouTube guys. And uh, they're going to come on and tell us about their journey through YouTube and into modeling as well. And I will announce that on Friday who we have. I already know what it is. just want to make sure first. Um, so yeah, make sure you tune in on Friday as well. Forum's busy as always. Facebook page is immensely busy. At the minute, it really is. Uh, the group builds are underway. The Holy Land SIG's underway. I'm taking part in. I've got my beautiful Academy Sufa, which I'll show the cockpit on in a minute. Uh, I'm currently building uh, my bike. That's for myself. Uh, the other group builds on the go at the minute. I have to look up at my... It's the War and Weather one, which is on till uh, 31st of August. Obviously, the Holy Land SIG's on till the end of September. And there's a T90 Buddy build on, which is on for another ooh, two weeks. And the horse goes, Yay! build which is on for another couple of weeks as well that's les's build the horse goes nay and andreas build the t90 build so you've got a couple of weeks if you're quick you can take part i'm still home to scratch build a horse we shall see we shall see uh but it's been busy ump's been busy family life's been busy and uh, i've been trying to model as much as i can as well so there we go so anything else to talk about not that i can think of offhand uh no nothing really so we'll head over to the bench have a look what i've been working on and uh see where i've got to Okay, so, uh, for, where should we start? Let's have a look. Uh, <clears throat> Academy's uh, 30 second scale super. I've been building this for the uh, Holy Land SIG. So this is the Wolfpack cockpit. There's the actual fuselage upper surface. Uh, we've got the intakes there, which I'll go through in a sec. This is the resin uh, Wolfpack cockpit. So this is currently a work in progress. Uh, it's all been cut out, ready to rock and roll. Literally just that plug on the bottom. But you can see how thin it is damn you can see through parts of it so you'll be very very careful cutting it but it's beautiful really is absolutely superbly molded resin so i primed it ump black then i've come in with the fs oh 36231 uh, which i was well research showed was the correct color might not be this must all be h317 um sprayed it got the base color down i've then hand painted all the consoles as you can see and then given a wash of mig oh it was a dark gray you know, I'm a wash to get all the definition between the panels, and that's where it's at right now. So, it still looks a little bit messy, but it is getting there. Still needs some of the buttons picking out, some other detail painting, 
the hoses painting and it'll start to look the part. I've got the instrument panels have been started to be painted up so they've been again base coloured and then uh, painted in the black again as well. So they're coming along really well. All the other parts are on my little parts bin there which are ready to be detail painted. All been base painted again. The seats, the seats are just a work of art. Absolutely beautiful in this kit. Uh, resin seats, even got all the fabric texture built into the back. They really are stunning. The downside is this copy costs 50 quid and it's very hard to find. Uh, the plus side is once you cut that bottom plug off, uh, this thing literally um, sits in place like so. Uh, it does fit in, I've had the lower half on, it does fit in perfect. So very, very nice, really cool. So that's my work in progress with the cockpit. So that's ready to go. I've also got the intake underneath, obviously it's not seamless. So what I have done, it does look untidy because it is, is I filled it in as good as possible. I got some uh, red Bondo spot glazing putty down the seam because there, there was a seam right down there. Um, sand it as good as possible. Then did the old trick of a bit of white tack in the bottom, stand it upright, poured in some white UMP primer right to the brim, left it for a couple of minutes, then poured it all out and left it sitting upright. I've done two coats of that so far and as far as I can see there's no seam. It's worked absolutely fantastically. Uh, it's a very quick and easy way of dealing with that seam without going to the expense of buying a seamless intake which there is available for this kit but I didn't want to buy it. So that's all ready to be installed in there and I've got that seam all on the side there to deal with. Um, that's the intake done, so very happy how that's come out. That's worked absolutely fantastic. One other shocking thing about this kit as well is I have an Aries, uh, so there's the head-up display covers as well. Uh, they're ready to be painted up. I've got the rear intake, intake, the rear uh, wheel bay. And let me just grab the lower half of the fuselage. And it's an absolute miracle because for once, the airy stuff actually fits in. It doesn't even need cutting. Nothing, it slots straight in and it is stunning. The detail in there is absolutely amazing. And yet, no work at all. It literally fits straight in. So that's a first for me, it really is. Uh, obviously, because of the nature of cutting parts off, this is the front wheel bay. Uh, it's gonna need some cutting off and then it somehow attaches um, underneath um, the intake just there. So that's gonna take a little bit of work to get it to fit properly. Uh, but I'm sure we'll get there in the end and it'll look just fine. So come along really well. Really happy with this one. It's a beautiful kit of a beautiful, beautiful aircraft. I've also got the uh, MRP paint set there for it. Um, so it is hopefully going to turn out rather nice. I've got just over two months to get this done. I got my mask got a mind of its own today. Just got just over two months to get it done. Uh, this book I've got is proving absolutely invaluable. If you're into F-15s, you need this Viper under the skin book from Evil Avi Eagle Aviation. It literally covers everything you want to know. Cockpit views, which are proved, like I say, invaluable. And there's a two-seater as well. Uh, beautiful, beautiful book. Again, it's not a cheap book. I can't remember how much it was, but it was a bit of a pain to get a hold of. But as a reference book, this thing's going to prove absolutely fantastic. So well worth getting if you're into your Vipers. And that's that. That's the F-16. That's a, a work in progress that's trickling along well. Very happy how it's going. I've also got the uh, Africa Twin bike as well, which has been shown a couple of times. This is where we're currently at. Uh, it's on its stand at the minute because its kickstand is working, but it's got a little bit of a habit of falling over by itself at the minute. So it's been painted up in various different colours of primer. So on there we have a mixture of Mr. Surfacer Black, UMP Black, and the new UMP Gloss Black, which is just there. So Using just primers really does give a nice tonal variation all the way around, even on the swing arm, etc. It does work really well. Engine's all been done, that's been painted in uh, UMP Gloss Primer and then painted in various different colours of Alkalad, uh, Extreme Metal, uh, Mr. Hobby Super Metallic, so on and so forth. Uh, it really is a stunning kit, it's going along well. Slow down a little bit now because obviously I'm working on different things, uh, but I am still plodding along with it. The actual stand is working and retracted as is the rear suspension as you can see underneath there does actually work so that's still a work in progress again like I say I've got quite a bit on the go at the minute 
certainly keeping me busy, you know, along with UMP and family life as well. It really is chugging along nicely. Uh, the wheels were done. Uh, the back wheels are already on, but I'll show you the front one. These were assembled, quite a lot of work in these. There is a seam all the way around that rim that needs taken care of. So that was taken care of. Spokes are in two parts per section per wheel. Um, and you literally have to paint all the rim, which was done in, oh, let me think, uh, Tamiya Extra Fine Primer. Then it was painted in Tamiya TS, oh God, got me now. It's a TS spray colour gold. And then uh, clear coats it in a 2K clear lacquer. Once that's done, uh, you then assemble it in a little jig, put all the spokes through individually, glue them all, and that's the wheel done. They do look stunning, and uh, they are very nice. A little bit time, um, labour intensive to build, but well worth it in the long run. I've then moved on to the bodywork. So again, this has been primed in Tamiya um, Extra Fine Primer, only simply because I had it, and then, I've sprayed it in TS45 uh, pearl white. Now, it is whitening out a little bit, but you can see the colour. It's absolutely stunning. It really is nice. There's a fairing. Got the front uh, wheel arch. Again, very, very nice. So these are ready for decals now. Uh, there's more parts there. And the tank. The tank was masked off with the supplied mask. And sprayed in TS89, which is this blue. There, absolutely stunning pearl blue. There's the pearl white, TS45. They were decanted into the airbrush and sprayed um, through my PS290, and the blue is stunning. The blue still needs flattened back a little bit. I have got a little bit of uh, bleed through the paint, uh, primarily there and there. Now, thankfully, anything past there isn't seen, so I'm not too bothered about that. And by the looks of it, the kit decal runs right up to the edge of there uh, with a silver line, so it should hide all that as well. So, fingers crossed, you shouldn't see any of it. If not, it'll be a couple of minutes just to very lightly mask it, mist over some white, and job done. There's ever such a slight ridge, so I am going to take it back and flatten that, flatten off all that surface, get a decal, 2K, and hopefully it's going to look the par. Quite nerve wracking doing that, it really is, I'm not going to lie. And last on the bike, we have the chain. These are all the little bits and bobs for the kit. Now, this is the chain. Now, there's 120 links there all assembled and there's five parts per link I think it's five I believe so um, there's a few nights work there very very monotonous but it's a fully working chain which is absolutely fantastic it's all plastic bar the metal bar in the middle that little barrel in the middle is actually metal and it's fully working like I say no glue at all on it that you all clips together you get a little tool to push it all home and a little jig as well which should be in there here it is a little jig, so you build it all in that, push it together, fantastic. As I say it's a bit tedious, but absolutely fantastic. I'm going to give that a light wash, probably an oil wash or an enamel wash, and that'll be it. That'll be left as it is. Absolutely stunning. It's a £30 option for the kit, so it does add quite a bit of value to the kit, but I think it looks absolutely stunning. The actual kit plastic doesn't look too bad, to be fair, if you don't want to splurge on that, um, but I think it's well worth it. Uh, I'm nearly 300 quid in the hole for this kit so far. So uh, 30 quid in the long scheme of it isn't all that bad. But stunning, the chain is absolutely fantastic. These are all my screws and magnets and bits and bobs for the kit, all kept safely in a little tub. So we'll pop that out of the way. So that's the Africa Twin, that's a CRF 1000L from Tamiya. Stunning kit, only just came out on the market, what, a few ooh, months ago with that? And uh, lovely, lovely kit, if you're into your bikes, that's well worth looking at. Now, something else I've wanted to work on for a while, I'm gonna try and find the box. I can't find it, never mind. Um, I've wanted to do some uh, Warhammer for quite some time. I painted one ages ago, let me grab him. And I'll zoom in a tad for this. So I painted him a couple of years back. Um, I followed a guide online, slight modulation effect with the paint. And he wasn't far off being done and I kind of lost interest a little bit. But I've wanted to revisit it for some time. I uh, couldn't find my Marines I had, I only used two out of the pack. Uh, so I bought another pack, I bought a starter pack uh, that cost me ooh, 20, no, £37 reduced from 50 odd. So that was one I did a while ago. Uh, and I bought this set a while back. So in here you get ooh, 12 actual figures in total. Uh, including a, oh I'm going to lose my mind now, it's a Dreadnought I think it is. And a Sergeant as well. And I've gone a similar scheme as that. So... If I grab one and I can show you them, so as you can see, 
we've got the modulated effect of the paint um, all the way up starting the dark blues at the bottom working our way up to the light blues and eventually white at the top so that, that's all they've literally been airbrushed nothing else yet they're ready for their detail painting so really happy how they're coming out the dreadnought thing I think it's a dreadnought I'm not sure of these things he looks great uh, like I say he's only base colored so far I'm gonna do his lower legs in a metallic color and then we can start detail painting up but they're very very cool very happy with the paintwork it really has come out really well and like I say uh, there's a normal space marine himself so these are some just picking out I've got the bike and the super the main priority at the minute but I will get these done and I'm enjoying it like I say kind of gonna follow a similar kind of build as that uh, whether they'll look the same I don't know because I've changed the paint slightly paints have been using our oh, budget minotaurs I bought the whole range of these a while back and they are superb paints. I've not really used them on a figure. I used them on some bigger things. And yeah, I was quite impressed. Um, but the colours are absolutely fantastic. They airbrushed straight out the bottle. Uh, no dramas at all. And the colours are just stunning. These are the colours I used. There's the base blue I used. Uh, then the second blue and the light blue. And then on top it was... I think it was the school white. That one. Yeah. On top. Uh, stunning paints. Really are nice. Um... Like I say, they work really well, and they're going to be my go-to uh, figure paints now for the fantasy. Uh, we've got the full range, they come in a fantastic range of colours, and they are beautiful, beautiful paints. So there you go. So there we go, it's everything I've been working on this month. Um, Trying along slowly on all of them. Uh, uh, kind of want to focus on the bike more than anything at the minute, but I kind of want to work on the others too. A little space marine is going to take the back seat a little bit while I work on the sofa, and I'll pick at them every now and then. Uh, but I've really been enjoying them, it's a different thing to do. It's been passing the time well, and uh, yeah, something different to do. Totally different kind of modelling for me. Uh, a lot of brushworks due to come up now as well, so that's going to be interesting uh, for sure. There you go. Like I say, the Africa Twin, loving building that, and the Sufa, stunning builds at the minute. Um, absolutely loving it. Hope he's got a 1 and 9 vid up soon, and that sounds like a broken record, but I will get one up soon. Um, hopefully next week I'm going to try my best for and uh, we can get cracking on that onto part is it six part five part six and uh, that's it so there you go so thanks for watching uh hope i haven't waffled on too long for you i'll take you back to lee and i'll see you soon so take care bye bye thanks paul well there you go that's paul section again as uh, he's got um several models on the go very nice indeed i must say i can't wait to see some of them built up that's for sure uh, but I think that's that's the end of the new show this week i just want to reiterate the thing about flicker um you know kick photo bucket into touch, get onto Flickr, get that sorted and we can get back to doing reveal shows properly and things like that and you won't lose your work uh, as you, uh, so many have done on those threads, um, on the uh, GBN threads and I hate to think uh, in the archive how many people have lost all those archive pictures of threads and things like that, it really is, it's uh, such a shame, it really is. Uh, but anyway, a uh, big thank you to our sponsors, eModels, Aircraft.net, Ultimate Modeling Products, um, and uh, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.